Welcome to another episode of Keep On Painting. Uh, let's start the time lapse. And uh, yeah, so today doing a little painting here, but I also want to talk about just being a starving artist or why, where did that term come from or why do people think artists have to be starving or whatever. And I think part of it comes from the fact that, you know, <clears throat> it takes a long time to learn how to be a good painter. And uh, there's a great book, Malcolm Gladwell, The uh, Outliers. It's very cool. I recommend it. He says you need 10,000 hours of practice in order to master a, a skill. And so 10,000 hours works out to... It's about five years of 40 hours a week. That's about 10,000 hours. And so, you know, in order to do that, that requires, you know, setting aside five years of practice, you know, to where you can't really have another full-time job. You, you need your 40 hours to paint, you know. And so, you know, in order to pull that off, you, you're not going to have much of an income, so you got to keep just a low overhead, and you got to have a place to work on the paintings, you know. If you think you're going to rent a nice little apartment and then set up your easel every day and then take it down at night, that's just not going to happen. Forget it, you know. You need, like, a dedicated workspace, you know. And for years, I was kind of... I was, like living in like warehouses and you know kind of these live-in studio spaces that you weren't really supposed to be living there and and you know taking showers in a sink you know and that kind of stuff just because you got to dedicate your life to it you know it's uh you know if you're gonna do it that's how you got to do it you know and so you know just keep your low overhead i've seen a lot of people who had you know they had good skills they were they had potential to be good artists but you know they'd get a nice apartment and they'd say oh i'm going to make the paintings pay for my apartment you know i'm going to i'm going to sell enough to pay for the apartment and it just you know it didn't work out so before long they got to get a job then they got to have a car to get to the job and before you know it they're just that job you know and so yeah, you know, you got to stay focused on it. There's a there's a great quote from uh, Thomas Hart Benton. And he said, The life of the artist is the greatest life in the world if you can make it through the first 40 years. Which, you know, that's a little bit exaggerated, but, you know, it's kind of true, I guess. And, you know, during that time when you're learning how to paint, you know, don't get super attached to those paintings. Just sell them cheap, get them out of here, you know, and, and turn them over, you know, make a living off of them because, uh, you know, you can kind of get paid to learn how to paint that way, you know, so keep your prices cheap and just keep practicing. And, uh, you know, I just today, I mean, I was kind of a slow learner. So I, I was a starving artist for like seven or eight years, I guess. I was living in some bad situations, you know. At one time, I was living... Uh, <laughs> this only lasted for a couple of months, but I was living in this warehouse, and there was a guy there who was kind of the caretaker, but, like, he had just gotten out of prison, and he had been, like, kind of grew up in prison. And so, you know, it was a cool experience, but it was sort of in this bad neighborhood. It was a great space, because... It was huge, and I could make a mess, and it was super cheap. And, uh, but, you know, it was kind of cool. You know, I got to hang out with him and kind of learned a lot, and he was really, you know, he was kind of cool guy, and, and so it was fun. So you'll have some great life experiences from it, you know, and, and yeah, just keep your, you know, don't go into debt and just live real cheap. And, you know, that's where the whole starving artist thing comes from is because, yeah, you need four or five years just to learn how to not be awful at painting, you know, and, you know, it takes a long time. So it's slow going, you know, and 
<clears throat> just today, you know, I like to just sell paintings and, you know, get them out of here, you know, and uh, I don't get real attached to them, you know, and uh, because I'm doing a lot of them, you know, it's, it's, and, you know, you got to pay the bills, you know, and so like just today the gallery called and uh, they said, hey, we got some people here, they want this painting, but they want a 20% discount. I was like, sell it, you know, I want a new motorcycle, you know, like I need to pay bills and and so yeah, I was like, get it out of here, you know. So I'm also watching the time lapse. It's looking great, it's a cute little painting. Uh this is a, a spot I like up in Colorado. And so I've painted there a couple times and I have a bunch of photographs from this spot. And it's great because it's got everything. It's got a pasture, it's got mountains, it's got clouds, it's got a sky. It's just a, a nice little combination of everything. That's another thing. If you really need to make a living, paint landscapes, you know, do some landscapes. Don't, you know, get caught up in like political stuff or anything. Like if you need to pay rent yesterday, paint some landscapes and, you know, they're the easiest to sell and you can make some money real quick with some landscapes, some nice little landscapes. And, you know, some people say, oh, you're selling out because you're doing this or whatever. And it's like, you know what? I'm paying the rent, okay? I, I want a new motorcycle, you know? The 2021s are out, you know? So, yeah, there it is. It's getting unframed. And so, yeah, it's a cool little painting. And uh, I'm super happy with it. And, yeah, it's kind of cool. So, yeah, like, subscribe. I hope you enjoyed it and uh instagram all that good stuff and uh keep on painting